Nothing feels more natural than having your dog around camp because that's exactly how we became friends in the first place. They take watch and keep us safe and we feed them and occasionally give them belly rubs. These animals are far from the wolves that they once were, so they need a little help sometimes. Here's some tricks and items to make traveling with a dog just a little bit easier. So I wanted to share some tips on overlanding with your dog and how to make it a better experience for both you and for your dog. The reason I'm making this video is because a lot of people travel with dogs and I've also gotten a lot of comments on they would travel with their dogs, but it's too much of a pain to deal with. I take Blue with me anytime I can because they want to be outside, they want to be out in the sun, they want to just be hanging out with us. And so I take her even though sometimes it would make our lives much easier not to take her. We take her to the expos where it's hot and it's miserable and uh, it's not necessarily the best situation, but I know that if we didn't take her, she would wanna be there with us, and honestly, if we leave her, then she gets sick half the time and needs a vet visit when we get back. So there's little things that we do that I think will help you out if you travel with your dog. So when traveling with the dog, what you're gonna run into is they don't wanna drink as much because they're out of their den, they're out of their environment, they don't know what's going on, and so they just get anxious and they don't wanna drink anymore. Most dogs are like that anyway. So here's the tricks to getting them to drink a little bit more. When you're traveling for a long time, at least with our dogs, it's always been a situation where they do not wanna drink in between stops. Every time we go to the gas station, Blue gets out, she gets to go to the bathroom and she gets to get a drink. To keep that efficient, what we do is we keep a bottle of water for Blue right here ready to go because we don't wanna to have to go to the back, get water out, because it becomes more of a hassle. We found things like Nulo, which is a beef flavored, um, basically electrolyte mix. This is kind of like Gatorade for dogs. You can squirt this into their water. It'll give them electrolytes and it'll make their water smell better and they're more enticed to actually drink it. So things like this are good to have in the truck. So we have a bottle of water, we have the Nulo, and then I also have this Sea to Summit bowl, which is not actually a dog bowl, but the reason I got it, it's kind of hard to open. Natalie actually hates this thing because I have to be the one to open it, but it has an O-ring on it. So I can fill this up and I can screw that down, and so Blue will always have water ready to go. So what we do at a stop is I will open this up, she can get drinks out of it, and if I need to put some new low in there, I can, or you can use beef broth, or you can make beef broth ice cubes and put it in their water if, uh, if you don't wanna have the liquids uh, sloshing around somewhere in the vehicle, and so you can throw that beef broth ice cube in their water, and then it cools it down a little bit, and they like that. But also, uh, whenever I need to get more water, I can pour it really quick. And again, it doesn't become a huge hassle. It makes it super easy. She has blessed us with her presence. She's been sleeping for a while. So that's the reason I like that bowl. Okay, so dogs get anxiety just like we do. And so some of the things that I've found to work with Blue whenever we're traveling is CBD. Not all CBD comes with THC. There's nothing illegal in this bottle. I buy this stuff online, no affiliation. This is from r and r and this is uh, organic full spectrum CBD specifically for pets. Now I put some of this in Blue's food. This helps with dog's pain and this also helps with their anxiety and so that's part of the reason we gave it to Blue because she's so old. But another thing that comes from it is they wanna drink a lot more water. These bottles are about 26 bucks and this will last me about two months or so. And so uh, we definitely take this everywhere with us now whenever we're camping. We keep it in the refrigerator and then with them being more thirsty, the downside is that in the middle of the night, she needs water. So again, that's where this bowl comes in because I can fill this with water before bed, put it up in the tent. I'm telling you CBD, Blue sleeps better. She's more hydrated. We don't have to deal with mud butt every time we have a stop because she's just stressing out. Blue used to have a problem that on a 10 hour road trip, we couldn't get her to drink water until we got to camp. And by that time, it's already too late. She's stressed out and uh, it just makes for a disaster. So uh, the CBD keeps her drinking. As often as we stop, we'll give her water and she'll lap it up, no problem. So this stuff is a lifesaver. If you have a dog that has an issue with drinking water, get CBD if you wanna travel with them because this, this stuff is incredible. We are traveling right now and one of the most useful things I think that I've found for traveling with Blue is this Kurgo dog bag and I am not sponsored by this company whatsoever. I found this online. The reason I go with Kurgo stuff 
because they make jackets, they make bowls, they make all sorts of stuff, harnesses, is it's a lifetime warranty. And so this bag has had an issue before. Um, the inner lining on it actually gave out and I got a hold of them and no problem, they sent me a brand new one. So this is just a food bag, it rolls up. So if you have a certain amount of food in there or if you start to use it up, it gets smaller as you go as like a Tupperware container will continuously take up a ton of space. It also has a little zip pouch on the side of it. We keep Blue's prescription in here for an allergy medication that she needs. And then we keep some extra um, antibiotics. And then also it has a little pocket on the bottom here you can put poop bags or something like that into, though I don't use it. But the biggest thing about this bag is that it has a lifetime warranty. And you can see just looking at it, this thing has been through hell already. Uh, we've had this one um, for several years now. And before that we had the one that we warrantied. And I even keep a, um, it's like a GSI, yeah, GSI cup in here that I can measure it out with. I can keep two cups of food per day in this for nine days, I believe is what it is. It's tight, it only barely rolls up. Since this was a two week trip, I measured out more and I put it into a gallon Ziploc. And then as soon as this was empty, I took the Ziploc, just dumped it back in here because this is just easy to grab out every morning. And then every day it gets smaller and smaller. And as you can see, we're nearing the end of our trip. I'll go more into Kurgo here in a minute because Blue's jackets are actually Kurgo as well. And I will spend a little extra money on things if I never have to buy them again. So anyway, very happy with this food bag. First and foremost, as you might be able to see, I have a cover on our seats. It's made for dogs, so it clips on and it protects it. I don't let it ride up here when we're on long trips on highways, just in case we get into an accident. But whenever we're on off-road trails, uh, I let her up front so she can have a window that actually rolls down. And something like this is really nice, just so you don't feel like your seats are getting destroyed. I think I paid like $20 for the seat cover and it makes the dogs experience that much better. These animals, of course, want to stick their head out the window, as we all know, but if you're worried about your seats, just get something like this. If you don't like your dogs and the seats in general, I get it, but if you're just trying to protect your nice seats in the front or something like that, just get these covers. They're pretty durable. You can just pull these out real easy, and it makes it to where your seat is clean underneath, and you're good to go for if a person sitting up front. So of course some dogs have no problem with eating, uh, but Blue does, she gets nervous. And so we put a little bit of the wet stuff in with her dry food. One can will last about um, a week or so because we give her such a small amount, but it just gets her interested in eating. And then we get these little uh, tops for them to where you can just close it up. Those are available. I'm sure everybody knows about those. So the downside is it does take up a little bit of room in the refrigerator, but it's only like a drink's worth. So uh, we carry one of those all the time. So for traveling with a dog, because they gotta take such a beating on their front legs whenever they're in the back of the car, cause they're always trying to hold themselves up. I wanted to find a good dog bed that wasn't just a bunch of cotton balls stuffed into something. And so Hest actually makes a dog bed as well. And I know I mentioned Hest stuff a lot, but I have the one in the tent. And it was so good that when they came out with a dog bed, I just knew that Blue would actually like it. When we had another dog bed we'd throw out on the ground, she wouldn't wanna sit on it. And the thing about these is that these have uh, like a waterproof membrane on the bottom of the mattress itself. And then there's actually another cover within this. So it keeps super clean, rolls up super nice, and she loves it, which is the most important part. And it helps sponge up the impacts when we're off-roading and she's trying to stand back there. And I feel like that will help her a little bit because she's an old dog. Hess foam that they use is it has a very high R value. So basically this is a very well insulated pad. And because Blue doesn't have much hair, um, it'll help keep her warmer in the environments where uh, we don't want her to be freezing. Because of this waterproof bottom on this, I don't care about putting this on dirty surfaces. It's not gonna pick up leaves like a cheap dog bed from Walmart will do. It just works really well. I can throw this down, not worry about it, and she has her own place. So this goes into the vehicle, this goes into the house, this goes into our campsites, and it keeps Blue that much more comfortable. So we've got jackets and stuff for her. And then of course, in the colder climates, we have her own little blanket here. I think this is Eddie Bauer. At the time, I bought this like five years ago, six years ago, and this has been a good blanket. It's just a little down puffy, but um, it keeps her warm whenever she needs it. And uh, she likes to sit in a camp chair and we'll have this wrapped around. 
And so this is her blanket and it's nice to have them their own little blanket and it's got a stuff sack. And the reason for that is because of course the blanket's gonna start smelling like dog and uh, I'm not particularly fond of using the blanket that smells like dog. So anyway, she has her own little blanket and that keeps her warm whenever she needs it. And uh, just again, trying to keep her comfortable. And then we don't have to worry about this thing getting messed up because it has been messed up. It's got embers and stuff launched at it from the fires. And so we just slap a piece of duct tape on there and it's just nice that she has her own little blanket. If we got to leave her in the car and it's colder out, she has her own little spot with her insulated bed. So it works really well. I have two different jackets for Blue from Kurgo. It's kind of a layering system. Of course, my dog has basically no hair. She has a bald belly. Um, I've joked about her having less hair on her belly than I have. And so um, we need multiple jackets for this dog. It's probably about 60 degrees out here right now. And she is already starting to shiver a little bit. She's an old dog. Point being, she needs jackets. And I like Kurgo stuff again, because if this Velcro starts to give out, they will warranty this as soon as the jacket goes bad, which is a big deal to me. Most of the time we use this little coat here. Um, it's got some zippers on the top and uh, then we can put her harness through it if we need to. But she's always very happy to get into her jackets and in the winter time we put her in both of them. And uh, they've just been really good jackets. This one's water resistant. It's a uh, dual sided so we can flip it around if we so choose and she can have a different color on. But point being is that uh, having jackets for your dog if they need it does make their experience better and making their experience better makes your experience better because you're gonna have just less hassle, less things to deal with. And of course, you're gonna feel bad if your dog is freezing when you are sitting around in a coat. If you guys have a Husky or something like that, of course, you don't have to worry about this stuff. Okay, so another tip with traveling with the dog, we've been using this recently. This is called a waggle. You do have to get cellular service for this. I believe it's around $20 a month or so. This is fantastic. Basically what this thing will do is you mount it wherever you want because it does come with like a quick mount. You can change the minimum and maximum temperatures that this will alert you at. We have a portable AC, but like any gadget, I don't totally trust it. So what we do is we keep this in the car with blue and then um, if that AC for some reason were to shut off, this will send us an alert and we're really close to our campsite whenever we're walking around and one of us will come back right away and then Blue doesn't have any issues whatsoever. Um, this will give you a low power alert and it lasts for about five days on one charge. Of course, using something like this still requires common sense. Um, this isn't an excuse just to lock your dog in the car. We are very careful with Blue, um, but this is a very nice gadget to have around. I do recommend the Waggle. So far it has been Really nice to have just to give us that peace of mind. If we go into a restaurant even, we can see what the temperature is inside of the vehicle at any given time. The one downside I would say is that it only lets you update every 30 minutes or an hour, I believe it is. So you can't just get on your phone at any given time and check the temperature now and then check the temperature in five minutes. It won't do that. But if you check the temperature and it's 80 degrees right now and it gets up to the threshold of say 90 degrees in the vehicle within five minutes, it will alert you of that. You just can't choose to update it as often as you want kind of but if it's a warning situation a dangerous situation it will do it at a much faster frequency it'll instantly let you know the second the thermostat sees that heat or that cold because it does read colder temperatures as well <laughs> well i know that this is a luxury item and i've covered this before but I absolutely love the Zero Breeze AC. Um, this thing is super handy for those that haven't watched my review from a couple years ago. Basically it's a 12 volt, uh, 24 volt AC system. It'll keep my tent at like 50 degrees. And it, this is the battery that can clip onto the bottom. These are expensive. This is a luxury item, but for traveling with a dog, this is one of the greatest things. Of course it's nice for us because, you know, just being able to have the luxury in a hot environment to have an AC. But the other thing to consider is like when you're traveling with a dog and you have to run into a store, I don't do it for very long. And I've done my own tests on my own vehicle to make sure that this was okay before I did it. Um, I can turn this on and you vent it out of a window and this will keep the car cool enough to where I can run into the store for like 20 minutes. And 
I have no concern with blue overheating inside of the FJ. And that way I don't have to keep the windows down and keep everything exposed to theft because it's a big problem, of course. This thing is just incredible for camping with dogs. It makes your life so much less worrisome. If you can swing it, this is a big one. This is such a useful gadget to have. If you have the means to get something like this, absolutely incredible. And here are a final few tips to help you travel with your dog. Don't forget the poop bag. Some places supply them, but lots of places don't. And if you're in a national park or something similar, you can piss off your camp neighbor pretty quick for not cleaning up after him. If your dog is spoiled enough to sleep in the tent and they are up in the middle of the night, they probably just need a drink. If your tent has windows that roll down like ours, use the flap as a bib. Otherwise, you can use the tent's included shoe bag or even the ladder bag to keep water off of your bedding. We once had a dog that was the polar opposite of blue. He liked to wander, he liked to challenge us, and he wasn't totally convinced that humans were qualified to call the shots. For these kinds of dogs, build a simple rope and pulley dog run and string it between a few trees at camp. I'll include Amazon links, but honestly, this kind of stuff is cheapest at your local hardware store. You don't want hot water on a hot day, and neither do they. So keep them a bottle in the fridge, and they'll drink every time. We often run into thunder from poor weather, fireworks around holidays, or gunshots on public land. These kinds of sounds terrify most dogs, so the first step is to put them into the vehicle, as it's as close to the den as they're going to get around camp. If you travel with a typical dog bed, you can even flip that upside down on top of them, and it seems to help them feel even more secure. Dogs sometimes don't sleep very well in the car, and I found that unless we have a window slightly cracked, Blue won't sleep. They assess their surroundings majorly with their sense of smell, so give it a shot as it seems to put them at ease. The downside of this is, of course, the wind noise can be very annoying. Hopefully all of you pet owners got something useful out of this video, and if you or your dog guessed that the transition noises were from puppy dreams, comment below. As always, thank you so much for watching and feel free to check out my other adventure, off-road and overland related content.